I'm Vanessa Tyler. Welcome to What's Eating Harlem, where we cover the most exciting community in the world. There is so much going on here in Harlem. Let's get started. Two sisters setting out to make their dreams come true, preserving a piece of Harlem history and serving up authentic sorrel. Who knows about festival? Join me at the edge. One look and you know they must live in Harlem. It's a certain style. Check out who our Selena Hill is spotlighting in Harlem style. The clock is ticking and these kids are feeling the heat in the kitchen. Kids cooking in Harlem, no fast food for them. The competition for good healthy food is on. How adventurous are you when it comes to food? See the fancy food they want to see on your plate. All of that and more on this edition of What's Eating Harlem. Closed captioning supported by Chocolat Restaurant Lounge, 2223 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, Harlem. Everyone eats at the bar at Chocolat. Late night weekend dining too. Chocolat Restaurant Lounge. What's Eating Harlem? Funded in part by Cove Lounge. Situated in the heart of Harlem, it embodies the spirit and vitality of its community, delivering a unique blend of cool sophistication and urban edge. Herb Bonnie, barbecue sauce, chili sauce, mustard, infused with their pure truffles. All the way from Italy to New York to your grill, just in time for summer. Herb Bonnie, maker of the world's truffles, is a proud supporter of What's Eating Harlem. You know how your sister is often your best friend? You played together, grew up together. Well, how about going in business together? Which is exactly what Juliet Masters and her younger sister, Justine Masters, have decided to do. They've teamed up to open a cool Harlem spot called The Edge. We recognize there was a need for a for a spot that you could go to to have something to eat, to have a nice drink, to hear good music, and we've always wanted to open up uh, a place together. And so here they are, their place together. We are longtime residents of Harlem. We've been living in Harlem for about 15 years now, and we've always, since we moved here, we've wanted to have our, a, a stake in, in the game, so to speak, and put our mark um, in the community. and an opportunity arrived for us to be able to do that in this space and uh, we, took, we took the chance. A gamble that has paid off, the Edge Harlem is on the corner of 139th and Edgecombe Avenue. It is chic and full of hip Harlem history. Want to know why a picture of a young Langston Hughes graces a prominent spot on the wall? Because years ago this was the spot for the writers and the poets. No wonder you can feel a certain vibe here. And Harlem has such a rich history, and we found out that there was a librarian, her name was Reg Regina Andrews, and she worked at the 135th Street Library. And she used to hold literary salons uh, in this building. And she used to have uh, folks like Langston Hughes, and they used to party on the rooftop. So when we heard that, we were like, oh, well, you know, it makes perfect sense that, that we open up a spot on this corner in this building, because it already had you know, it already has a history to it. A history to which the sisters have added their own flavor. When you walk in here, there's, there's, a, there's a Caribbean feeling from the flowers and the ferns, uh, the, the wood, the blue floor. You know, there, there are tones of Jamaica and there's uh, obviously a cosmopolitan feel of, of New York City. That Caribbean flavor is also on the menu. I am the, I'm the designer of the menu and uh, the food comes from uh, my background, our background of Jamaica and England. Big thanks to their dad. If you know, then you know that's authentic homemade sorrel. He's the, uh, 
the maker of the sorrel, which is a traditional uh, holiday drink that is served um, over Christmas in Jamaica. We serve it year-round because it's delicious and it's um, made with love. Also delicious, the best festival ever. You would think we're in Jamaica and they serve it with their ackee and saltfish. That's a little kale on the side. And we perfected the festival recipe, mm -hmm. yes. Also perfected their spicy shrimp with mango salsa and coleslaw. It's like a party on a plate. And the avocado smash toast, what a treat. In a nod to their English heritage, they're crunchy on the outside, unbelievably succulent on the inside fish and chips. And they want you to enjoy your experience at the edge. So after 5 p.m., shut down your laptops, turn off your screens, and instead of internet, guests should interact with each other. The edge is family. Family recipes, family friendly, and family love with two sisters combining their dreams to make a go of it in Harlem. Thank goodness I have my sister to work with because we can, we can tell each other as honestly as we feel whatever it is we feel and know that it, you know, it will be heard, listened to, and maybe we'll have a little few words over it, but it's never something that you know, hold a grudge. You know my weaknesses and I know yours and we both understand our strengths, so we're, we're a very good balance, shall we say? Like I know when I have to take the lead on something and Juliet needs to take the lead and I know when to listen. Harlem wants to get you involved. You got a story idea? Tell us. Go to our website, whatseatingharlem.com. There, you can become a member and get discounts to some of the places we feature. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Harlem style. If clothes say a lot about a man, then the men you are about to meet are saying plenty. They are always dressed to the nines, and they are keeping classic Harlem alive through their style and sophistication. Plus, they have their own group. These are the Abstinian Gentlemen's Club of Harlem. Pretty fancy title, right? Well, these are pretty fancy guys. Today, I'll speak to them about their style at their headquarters here at the Red Rooster in Harlem. Growing up in Harlem, um, one of the, the wonderful advantages was coming out of the whole Harlem Renaissance period. Um, for instance, my great-grandmother, she had a uh, fish and chip spot, and, and so right near where the Kaya Brothers Mansion was, and so we were still, there were still folks who were around who were able to, to pay homage and serve as a vestige 
of what was going on during the Harlem Renaissance. My dad had some skills in tailoring. He went to school for tailoring. And so, I mean, uh, just watching that and, and, and being able to, to be surrounded by that impacted me. And um, no matter where it was that I went, so if it was at the barber shop, or as a young kid, even uh, back then, my dad would take me to the bar. Uh, he played for a, a team that was sponsored by the bar. And you would see gentlemen. And so early in the morning going to school, you would see men dressed in suits. And you never knew their occupation. But everyone just sort of, it was a, it's a Harlem, um, really, uh, Harlem legacy to just be well-dressed and stylish. The legacy is really as, as a homage and, and sort of to, to continue um, really my Harlem roots. And, and just, I mean, if you, you look good, you feel good, and you never know what may happen. I recall, Selena, there was a, a, a photograph that I was looking at recently. Uh, in that photograph was my grandfather, my father and uncle, and, and a granduncle. And my granduncle had on a white dinner jacket, and my father and uncle were wearing um, suits. And my grandfather had on a suit. And I said, well, what was the occasion? And my dad said, there was no occasion. It was Friday, and we were all going our separate ways. We were having a drink together at the house before we went out. But Charlie Davis is not alone with his classic look. When they step out, you've got to stop and stare. Harlem Dandies was just something that came about as uh, a group of us that are you know, mature men who always hang out together. And we always, we, we again, preserve that Harlem legacy of, of being well-dressed. And um, we do various events, like we, we love to smoke premium cigars uh, and, and whatever events that there may be that, that were there. So at some point, I thought that we should just really sort of um, not just keep it among ourselves. And, and I started with just putting it on Facebook. And, and so the response that I got from others saying, wow, this is wonderful, you know, I remember when, um, and I love the way you guys dress. So I brought together, uh, again, my, I call them my convivial comrades as, as we got together. And so I just started to display and honor, you know, their sense of style that stays in line with, you know, our philosophy of just being, again, mature, well-dressed, elegant gentlemen. Charlie and I work together, and um, Charlie comes to work dressed just like that. And it's always impressed me, and I always like European-style clothes. And watching Charlie make me want to get into my own thing about dressing, wearing suits more often. The hat is, um, I purchased this hat from Ben Craft Hatters in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Of the suit, this is a traditional Southern Haspel suit. The Haspel company that actually started um, the uh, Southern suits out of New Orleans. The shirt is from Charles Turret, which is an English company. I have that accessorized with um, cufflinks from Tiffany. Bow tie is from Countess Mara, and actually, um, I love it because it's a dual bow tie. So <laughs> I got it two for one. <laughs> Pocket Square is a, a Talbert Pocket Square. The shoes are uh, Mercanti Fiorenti, so they're uh, spectators and they're, um, again, they're Italian, Italian shoes. The belt is from uh, Nostrums, just a calf, calfskin leather belt to, uh, to complement um, my shoes. Well, the pinky ring is a legacy. This pinky ring was given to me um, by my father, and it was uh, just recent. Um, I have a family member, my brother, who's ill, and while we were at the hospital, um, he said, uh, I said, hey, Dad, that's a nice ring. I remember that ring. He said, yeah, yeah I've been wanting to give this to you. Now you know this is Classic Harlem.
So, if it's unique and it's fabulous, then it must be Harlem style. I'm Selena Hill. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen because the pressure is on. What point are you guys at right now? These teens are slicing, they're dicing, they're measuring, they're squeezing, they're walking and rolling. They're competing in the teen battle chef cook-off. And get this, they are doing it all against the clock. All right, guys, we have how much time left? 52 seconds, guys. The competition is an education. Students from three high schools, including one in Harlem, showing what they know after eight weeks of learning how to throw down. Lynn Fredericks and her family cook productions have made it all possible with the support of Emblem Health. We thought it would be a great thing to do to help educate the kids about uh, eating healthy and healthy cooking. We believe that it takes several small steps to achieve a healthy lifestyle, and uh, Team Battle Chef fits right into that. I like to cook. It's fun. It lets, it, let, it lets me express myself in a way I never thought I could. During the reception portion of the event, the teens handed out appetizers serving a treat and a food history lesson. Well, this is panzanella. It's pretty much a bread salad. It was made in Florence, Italy around the 1500s. Traditionally, it was made with stale bread. They will dip it in water. Pretty much it has garbanzo beans, cucumbers, parsley, olive oils, tomatoes, cucumbers. For them, it's important to know how to cook. They are the fast food generation a generation suffering from obesity. Because if you know more about the things you're eating, you can make healthier choices. Five, four, three. As the time runs out, these teens know it's not too late to start eating healthier. In the heat of competition, celebrity judges will pick the best dish, but already they are all winners when it comes to knowledge of nutrition. Three, two, shut it. Food, not just the plain, how about the fancy? Here, have a fruity popper. A fruity popper, try popping one in your mouth. So fruity popper is like a fruity caviar, basically it's like a burst of fruit in your mouth. Welcome to the world of the exotic, the fancy foods which held its specialty foods trade show at the Jacob Javits Convention Center. Hi there, would you like to have some Borgnine's coffee soda? If I wanted something cool and refreshing that I could drink all day long, and I love soda and I love coffee, so I decided why not put the two together? So we came up with Borgnine's Coffee Soda. Nancy Borgnine came up with this idea and is revealing it today at the food show. Her dad, late classic actor Ernest Borgnine, helped her with her dream drink. It uses real coffee, slightly sweetened. This may not look exotic, except this is fancy foods, and nothing says it like truffles on pizza. You know, truffle is not anymore that product that is going to the high-end restaurants only. You can have truffle in a pizza place, hamburgers, uh, you know, pasta. Uh, there are different ways, and that is what we are proving. Urbani that. Truffles has a big presence at this year's show. The Italian company has a big share 
of that elusive, exclusive, expensive truffles market. Uh, this was like uh, less than 36 hours ago was underground in Italy. We received this product this morning early, so before to come to the show we were able to bring in very fresh and nice. The lore of truffles dates back generations. It was hunted then the way it is now, with dogs in the forests of Italy using their noses to sniff out the pungent underground mushrooms. The same day it is prepared, and with hours after that, flown throughout the world, usually to the kitchens of very high-end restaurants and into the hands of some very fancy chefs. I've created a um, white truffle and porcini mushroom risotto. Here at the show, the plan is to bring truffles that come from the earth more down to earth. The Urbani family owned company wants new customers and they want to especially tap the Harlem market and get chefs at all the new restaurants uptown to try using truffles in their dishes. Urbani is also a supporter of the show, What's Eating Harlem? Truffles are expensive. Black truffles, about $300 a pound. But the white? The white truffles can really be pricey, not unusual to be about $3,500 a pound. So the solution? Infuse the everyday with truffles, like ketchup, mustard, even barbecue sauce. Soon, truffles won't be as exotic anymore. And pizza is incredible. That's all the time we have for now, but join us next time on What's Eating Harlem. I'm Vanessa Tyler. See you uptown. Closed captioning supported by Chocolat Restaurant Lounge, 2223 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, Harlem. Everyone eats at the bar at Chocolat. Late night weekend dining too. Chocolat Restaurant Lounge. What's Eating Harlem, funded in part by Cove Lounge, situated in the heart of Harlem, it embodies the spirit and vitality of its community, delivering a unique blend of cool sophistication and urban edge. Urbani, barbecue sauce, chili sauce, mustard, infused with their pure truffles, all the way from Italy to New York to your grill, just in time for summer. Urbani, maker of the world's truffles, is a proud supporter of What's Eating Harlem. It embodies the spirit and vitality of its community, delivering a unique blend of cool sophistication and urban edge. Urbani, barbecue sauce, chili sauce, mustard, infused with their pure truffles, all the way from Italy to New York to your grill, just in time for summer. Urbani, maker of the world's truffles, is a proud supporter of What's Eating Harlem. To become a member of What's Eating Harlem, go to www.whatseatingharlem.com and sign up for special events like wine tastings and food tastings. Also, join us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you have any ideas for stories about Harlem, send them to info at whatseatingharlem.com.